All right, today we are talking about why you should never buy a home, ever. <laughs> and I saw this real. We say that, but we own a home, so. We do own a home. Yes. So we're gonna, we're gonna comment on this a little bit and we'll give some counterpoints as well. I saw this reel by this guy named Grant Cardone, who's a big real estate investor, business guy. And I'll play it for you in just a second. But he very confidently says that no one should ever own a home. And this is one of those things that it's hard to wrap your brain around. Yeah. So I, let's you, listen to it and then we can. Yeah. Let's we, just we got some to thoughts. It. We got some thoughts. But yeah. I'll just play it and then, um, yeah, and we kind of you know, go from there. Yeah. So one second. Most people shouldn't buy a home. No one should buy a home. Interesting. Homes dream. were not built for people, homes were built for banks. The bank created that product to sell money. You can't just loan people money. You need a product in between. The bank can't lend money for just money. Like you need a reason to borrow money. Oh, you're starting a business. That's a reason, but it's really risky for the bank. Everybody should have a home, right? Oh man, that's pretty good. We should call it something like the American dream. You can't just call it a house, right? Everyone should have one, right? They got the politicians behind it. Yes, everyone should have one. And then what they did was basically those homes were built for banks because who made all the money on the homes? Wasn't even the builder. Certainly wasn't the homeowner. It was always the banks. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So. So there we go. So that's. I mean, the idea of basically they've created this product that we don't really need is a hard thing for me to wrap my brain around. Well, I don't think it's that they, that we don't need it. I think it's that there was a lot of strategy in yeah. this, in the marketing of this. I mean, I know home, home ownership like shot up from the basically post-World War II mm. into the 60s and that whole era was the beginning of like just mass consumption in the West. And, and that was all part of the strategy behind it. And so like that, that is fascinating to me. Right. And, and I think that begs the question of like, why are we... I always want to be asking questions like, why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Why has this become the standard? And is it the yeah. best standard? Today, he just said, we were driving around. It's fall here in Tennessee. It's beautiful. <laughs> and I, we saw all these yellow leaves just covering a lawn in downtown Franklin. And so it's like this older home and these, this giant tree and all these leaves on the ground. And I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. And you went on a rant and you were like, why is it that, like, when did we start buying into this thing that we had to rake out all of our leaves and you couldn't leave it there on the grass? And yeah, because it like, well, I mean, you tell you, well, you tell me. God's it's, design <laughs> is for the leaves to decompose and fertilize the ground. Fertilize the ground. And instead, we're raking them all up and never letting any leaves hit the ground. And so anyway, so that's that's kind of one of those things. It's like, why are we doing this? You know, and this isn't about raking your leaves. This is <laughs> a subject for a different podcast. Although we don't rake our leaves. That's but, more out of laziness, though, probably. But that's the part of it. Like, why should I do extra work that works against something that you think is beautiful, that's good for... Well, All those were beautiful, but I think if they're decomposing, okay. that's when they we're start getting, getting off on too much of a tangent here. So I'm just going to let you have the leaves. And <laughs> if you want to rake them, you can rake them. More power to you. Okay? So you do whatever we can, you want. We can go. move on. We can move okay. on from the leaves. Point Sorry. is, I think it's good to ask <laughs> questions, even if I decide that, yeah, let's just rake our leaves yeah. all the time. Like, that's fine. But it's right. good to ask questions to understand why we're doing what we're doing. And that's what I think Grant is doing here that I think is powerful. Now, whether I th actually believe that no one should ever home own a home, I, I'm not in agreement with that. We can kind of explore that. I know. But, but the point is, I think asking those questions about the origins of some of these things is really insightful. Yeah, if you think about this from the perspective of the banks, they make a lot of money. Like yeah. L lending for homes, and and it's such a safe investment. And back to the point he made about lending for a business, it's like, yeah, that's so much riskier for the bank than a home, a home loan, where they're going to get paid interest for 30 years. Oh, gosh. And like right now, I just ran the numbers on this. Right now, interest rates are a lot of places, 7%, 7.5%. Really yeah. And at 7%, a 30-year mortgage on a $300,000 loan, you're going to pay $415,000 of interest oh over the life gosh. of that loan. So you're going to pay way more interest than you are actually principal paying yeah. it back. And so you take out a $300,000 loan and you're going to pay back 
whatever, $715,000. Like, so the point is banks are making a lot of money, especially in situations like this where the interest rates are higher. Right. Gosh, wouldn't you just do better for yourself to just be saving for that long? Pay for the house with cash. Pay yourself the interest that you were going to yeah. pay. No, oh I mean, it, we and all I know, know it's 30 years, but still. Not many people are that patient to do that. But it wouldn't even need to be 30 years. It'd be way right. less. But, um, but yeah, we, we know. I mean, I, I've encountered some people who have saved up money to buy a house with cash, and that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Who was that? Was yeah. that Crystal Payne? Well, Crystal Payne did it. But yeah. like, we've run into other people. She told her as story well. on one of our podcasts. Yeah, she was right? on one of the earlier episodes. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, her and her husband just were really diligent and saved up, bought their house with cash money. I mean, that is, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So anyway, this definitely can be done. Like people can do it. Yeah. Um, and you're at a huge advantage, you know, I mean, because yeah, we've had a paid off house now for what, probably eight of the last 10 years, Yeah. I would say. And we moved here and had a mortgage for a little bit, but, but you save so much money when you don't have a mortgage. It's like you have right. so much more money each month, you know, that you can do a lot with. So it's really powerful. Okay, so what situation do you think we would be in for you to say, yeah, it makes more sense for us to not own? Uh, I have some friends who are, they feel called to plant churches. So that's just part of their ministry. They go to different places and they plant churches. And so they don't own because they're like, we'll be moving in a few years and it makes so much more sense for us to just rent. Yeah, yeah if you're going to be moving be within two or three years, it almost always makes more sense to rent. Yeah. And if you're going to be in a place for five years or more, a lot of times, you know, it makes more sense to buy. But, you know, in our case, like, this is one of the reasons why I think owning a home is really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to do a lot to our home. Like, we built a really big garden in the back. And, yes. you know, so for well, example, this I've... office, like everything that's in this office... Like, I yeah. built these shelves into the wall. And there's things right. that's like, I don't know if we could do that Those if we shelves. were renting. There's <laughs> shelves behind us. Um, and there's just so many things like that that in many rental situations, you don't have that opportunity to customize and tailor to your needs. Right. Okay. So that's a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. But there's a huge counterpoint there as well in that, like, we saved so much money when we were renting. Oh, my gosh. Because we weren't doing any of that I stuff. I loved renting. I loved renting because... I just felt like there was, like, no maintenance. Like, yeah. for me... No, and that's a huge advantage. I, I mean, it's like, if the dishwasher breaks, that's somebody else's problem. Like, we just had our fridge break not too long ago. Was mm -hmm. that, like, a year ago or something? Yeah. And it's like, we had to go buy a new fridge, which was, ugh, Expensive, really annoying. Expensive, time-consuming, all the stuff. Yeah, and it's like, I would love for that to be someone else's problem. <laughs> yeah. No, and so that's another advantage of it. Yeah. But no, I mean, in our case, like, yeah, and there's part of me that loves, because, yeah, we own our house, but we have a lot of money tied up in the equity of the house that right. I would love to be investing in some different ways. Yeah. And, you know, it's, this house has been a great investment. Right. But, yeah. And so if we were bouncing around a little bit more and I didn't care about building a big garden, I don't know. I think it might be something I'd be a little bit more intrigued by. Yeah. That whole thing. Another kind of interesting thing along these lines is we have some new friends that we met not too long ago, and they have three different homes and right. in three different states, and one in California, one here, and then I'm not sure where the other one is. But what they do is they like kind of bouncing around between the three of them, and when they're at one, they rent the other two out on Airbnb. And they just cycle between the three this houses. Crazy. And like I'm I'm so just curious what this lifestyle is like. We should interview them, like bring them on. Well, that would be great. Yeah. It. Because it is such a fascinating idea where you can have real estate and it's all kind of paying for itself. Yeah. And you still Yeah, have no, and I, I understand if I remember right, all three mortgages are covered right. by the Airbnb that they're doing on the other two while Because yeah, doing even it, which, if you don't like want to bounce around in the country or whatever. You could do it all within the same city. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, no, and I would love doing that. I would love for us having a place out in the country a little bit more and then one in the city. down in the gulch or something. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, and then we could just bounce back and forth. How's it sound? Do and then do that? you're the landlord. Like yeah. you're the you're the one that you can like f go fix it and Well, no, I don't want to do that. We'll get a property manager. Oh. I would think you would enjoy that a little bit. No, I don't want to do that. They don't you care. can do it. They don't care about this. You can do it. I don't want to do it. 
Anyway. Uh, but anyway, the point is, like, I, I think that's an interesting idea. Yeah. If you're mobile enough. I mean, they have, like, a whole family. Yep. I don't see us doing that as a family of five. But maybe if it were just the two of us, I, I could see us doing something like that. Uh, I think when the kids are a little bit older, we could maybe do it. Maybe. But anyway, tying all this back up, I... You know, I think Grant makes some interesting points there in this. I don't agree that you know no one should ever own a home and that we all should always be renting. I think there are situations <laughs> where it makes some sense. But I will say this. I think it makes a whole lot more sense when your mortgage is paid off mm. and you're not paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to the banks. Yeah. Like the amount of money that we have saved by, you know, by quickly paying off our house and not having to pay interest to the bank for a couple extra decades, Mm -hmm. it's just insane. And so my encouragement is try to pay your house off early. Try to get a payoff. Now, of course, pay off your credit cards, other high interest stuff first, you know, and maybe if you just got a mortgage recently, it's a little bit higher, but but the point is get the mortgage paid off first. And that kind of leads to your homework. We're giving you homework, okay? It's good (laughs) homework though. So I have an article that we put together. Your homework is pay Mm -hmm. off your house tonight. There you go. By Just tonight, it. get it done. Many years ago, we put together this article. It's four tips and you know little things that you can do to basically pay off your mortgage faster. Mm. And some of the stuff is pretty simple stuff that you can do really easily that will save you many thousands of dollars. So it's real, real simple. The link is a little bit longer on it. So just Google or go to, if you go to seedtime.com, our website, scroll all the way to the bottom, we have a search box. You can type it right in there. Just search for like, payoff mortgage in that search box, or you can just go to Google and type seed time, payoff mortgage. It'll probably come up right at the top, but it's four tips to pay off your mortgage earlier. So check that out. And while you're there over on our site, if you haven't checked out our recession survival guide, we put together a little PDF with, again, some tips and strategies on how to handle this current recession that we're in. And so this one is just seedtime.com slash recession. You go there, Drop your email in. We'll send you this PDF. And a lot of people have found it to be really, really helpful. That's great. So check that out. And now we're going to read a review review. from one of our readers of Simple Money Rich Life. And if you haven't left a review for this book. Well, if you haven't read the book, start there. Start there. But if you have read it or are in the process of reading it, I'd love for you to help us. We're trying to reach our next plateau of reviews. And we're at 200 and what, 68? 68, something like We're trying like to get that. to 300 reviews on Amazon. So if you wouldn't mind leaving us a review over there, it would be a huge blessing to us. Super we will helpful. read it. Maybe we'll read it on the next episode here. Ooh. Um, so really appreciate that. But what are we reading? Okay, so this one is by Martin, and it says, Words of wisdom for all ages. He, and he says, My 24-year-old son and I are having some great conversations as we read Simple Money, Rich Life. It's serving as a ministry alongside the learning and language of finance for us. Uh, Young people are uh, young people often feel they need to show how resilient they are until they are not when real life happens. Yeah, (laughs) that's when they really need God. I'm grateful Bob and Linda chose to share their journey and reveal how their understanding and wisdom is rooted in an unshakable faith. Their story is reaching many. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Appreciate that, Martin. That's awesome. And, and That's again, great. I, I love the idea of like reading this with your kid. Yep. Like walking through this with a college age or just, you know. No, we had some, I don't know if you remember this, but one of the woman was reaching out. She was taking her homeschool kind of group, co-op group through it. I love this. And, and it, I'm like, this That's is crazy. brilliant. That's crazy. I this love it. This is brilliant, though, because it is, it's written so that people can understand it. Oh, yeah. Any high school senior can understand. Yeah. And maybe not relate to everything that you, when you're living at home. But, right. But the point is, we wrote this. I, that wasn't the intention that we'd have high schoolers <laughs> reading it. It's definitely easy enough to understand for, for them. sure. And not every money book that it I've read gives is. you kind of a good insight into moving out. Like that, that, yeah. like that's the next thing is like moving out, yeah, getting a job and yeah, being All responsible for yourself. Adulting, adulting, right? isn't that the word of the uh, year or uh, last couple of years? I guess I was gonna say the year. Anyway. No. So, all right. It's good hanging out with you. Homework tonight. Go check out that article. Four tips on how to pay off your mortgage a little bit early. And then pay it off. Get going on it. Like it is an attainable goal. Let me just, let's just encourage you in that. We didn't grow up with a whole bunch of people around us paying off their mortgage early. We didn't think it was really that attainable. Yeah. So let us be those coaches in your corner just encouraging you. It doesn't matter what your world looks like. It doesn't matter 
even where you are financially at this moment, like especially with God, it mm-hmm. is possible. It is absolutely yeah. possible. So start praying and believing and taking some action steps towards that goal. Yeah. And let us know as you start making some progress. Yeah. All right. Have a great one. We'll see you next time.